Hello, welcome back to Monster Train. This episode's coming to you at 2.45 a.m. Uh, I've been hard at work today on my project, and it's going okay, is what I would love to say to you, but it is not going okay. Uh, <laughs> hope you're doing well. I'm doing fine. Uh, my project, we have a final presentation on Monday. It is Saturday now. It would be Friday night when I'm recording this, and the uh, final turn-in is on Wednesday. One of my group members has informed me that he will not be able to go to final presentation, so that's pretty cool. And I messaged the person I'm doing this project for to be like, hey, could I have a meeting with you this weekend to talk out a few of the fine details of the remainder of this project, and I got no response. So, you know, <laughs> it's a little tough, but I'm all right. I'm, I'm, I was actually just not going to record this episode because I was so tired, and then I fell asleep at like 1.30 and woke up at 2, and I was like, well, I guess I'm okay now. I'm awake. I, I, I've just been, I've been doing that a lot lately, uh, by, you know, actually reasonably much. I've been like, instead of going to bed early, waking up late or anything like that, I just, I go to bed late, I wake up early, and then I fall asleep for like 30 minutes in the middle of my day. Although, 1am isn't really the middle of my day. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. I don't have a question for you today. I, feel free, leave a comment about whatever. I am... I am all ears. Whatever's on your mind, however, I am going to record this episode and then I am going to go to bed. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It's XL Awoken Default Wormkin. Sorry, I thought I saw a cat in here. Uh, Rage Talos, Darkness Arcus, Patience Seraph, Razor Sharp Edge, Echo Snare, Edge Prior. Yeah, one time, well, first let me, let me go through this part and I will then tell you my short story about my cat. I like Mark of an Exile. Guild Marker is extremely good, but Mark of an Exile is also just a little better, I think. I'm gonna go Strangler or Thorn Lord here. Strangler. And with Strangler, I take the Horde. These are all good, but I think Emblem of the Exiles is great. We have extremely good Wendleton survival from our first two relics, so I like to see it. Yeah, one of my cats a few days ago, I think it would have been Wednesday or so. Sorry, I'm going to also lean back and pull you in a little closer, like so. Hope you don't mind. But I, uh, yeah, so I, I closed my door and I, like, pro probably about an hour later, I looked over and saw that one of my cats was in here and he did not like make any noise or anything he just stood there at the door looking at it until it opened and so i felt a little bad because like i trapped my man in here and so since that happened i've been trying to make sure that i when i close my door if i ever open it i just like double check that there are no cats because you know i know i didn't mean to put him in jail he didn't deserve jail not entirely, anyway. But, anyway. This run should, honestly, with this opener, it should be pretty easy to convert. The hard part is going to be Patience Seraph without a good option to defeat. Uh, so the answer to the Patience Seraph is going to be a Daze card. I would like... I, honestly, I don't hate Steel Enhancer. Just a little more HP. Getting HP back is very good. But also a third Razor Sharp is very good. Nah, it's okay. I think you go Echo Transfer here. And we want a unit to stand in front of Wendleton and tank. Is that unit Keeper of Echoes? I mean... We're strong, probably. Keeper of Echoes might actually stand behind and just offer 1-1, one, one, but... We will see. Probably two plus twenty fives actually, and then I change my tune. I will take the horde. Oh, light skift is weird because I can already I can already get light skift a sorta. Okay, 
So what Light's Gift does for us is it means that I don't have to take Quick, which means I skip Predator. But what does that actually mean for you? The Predator, yeah, Light's Gift is good, I guess. Predator is... Hmm, the multi-strike is okay in this run. I might end up taking Predator anyway. I guess Light's Gift is good if we miss on Predator. That's what it is, really. It's the Wormkin banner? Hmm. I don't think Self-Infuse Keeper makes a lot of sense here. I actually think if you were to do that, it might be close to better to go. In the host care of his There's gonna be a lot of yawning in this episode. I'm not actually all that tired, but... Like, I, I'm, I'm tired, but it's more like I'm tired because I just woke up. But it is very weird to... I, I keep a more robust sleep schedule, typically. I don't really do a whole lot of waking up after a certain time or before a certain time. I get on the schedule and I just live, so... Waking up at, uh... Even if it was just from, like, a short nap, it's still waking up at... What is it? 3 a.m.? No, it was, it was more like 2 a.m. Yeah. It was, uh... It, I gotta, I gotta adjust, but also... I'm probably going to go to bed after this. Cause like, what the hell else am I gonna do? What else do you do at a time like this? You probably just go to bed. Tomorrow will be better. The scaling? So I guess... Hmm. If this wasn't Patient Seraph, I think that this run is just in the books. So there's one card I'm looking for for this run. And it is Soul Crushing Guilt. Soul Crushing Guilt is the in the books card that bypasses Patient Sarah. Yes, I will take Purple Steel Enhancer. And the healing is okay. I will live without it though. Echo Infusion is good. We're just looking for any forms of survivability. The Founding Echoes is also okay. I'll change Steel Enhancer. Remember that this card, since it's purple, is actually 4-4. Four, four. I'm down to go look at this. Maybe there's a spell chain in here. There is not. I am still going to duplicate, unless there's like a really strong build a card here. Oh, there's good old Wingmaker. Or minus one size. Minus one size means you can play two keepers in the space of one. That's really good. Doubling the number of keepers I can put on the floor with Wendleton. That sounds very strong. Extreme Stone Wingmaker is okay, but you gotta. This is a situation where you gotta keep in mind what's losing us this run. It's not that I'm going to have enemies like backliners or frontliners walk up past me. It is legitimately impossible for them to walk past me without me losing the run. So. What I lose to here is Patient Sarah. And so when you keep that in mind, it actually makes it a lot easier of a choice. What makes it easier to fight Patient Sarah? Oh, I don't know. How about a second uh, Keeper of Echoes giving me doubled scaling? Yeah, that does seem better. I think you're never going to believe me. You're actually going to think I'm fucking with you. But I think I want to put... Edge Prior on the Keeper of Echoes. No, I know, I know, no, it doesn't sound like it makes any sense, but think about it. If I have two of them, that's effectively 10 HP per round, healed to the whole floor. It completely bypasses the Divinity Sweep, which is already not that big of a concern, but like, it is even less of a concern if I take this idea forward, so. Just think about it, let it percolate a little bit. What else am I going to infuse on him? What else am I going to infuse that helps me keep all my units alive? Nothing. There is not a good survivability option here that helps the whole floor. Other than... Edge Fryer, I think. I believe in Edge Fryer. And Edge Fryer believes in me. Well, Unleash the Wildwood is pretty good. So, like... <laughs> that idea has been neutralized by the card Unleash the Wildwood, which just full heals your floor when you need it to. Do I have any consumes I would like to replay? Nah. Okay. 
Steel Singer, no, this isn't your episode. Alright, so now we have Unleash and we go Husk Hermit because plus 30 HP is a better infusion. This run does not need space yet. It is a Root Seeds run. Here's the thing. Uh, for a little while, I'm going to be honest with you. For a little while, I took, I took energy because commenters bullied me into thinking that you had to take energy with Root Seeds because Root Seeds comes with plus one draw. I don't think that's true. I think that that's a lie told to me by big YouTube comments. Trying to keep me down. Keep me away from clicking on draw. I think I will click on draw. Because, like, I don't have to go to any more steel shops. So, just make my root seeds cost zero and it's effectively the same. I'm going to take draw. You can't stop me from taking draw. I feel like I've talked about it ad nauseum at this point. If, if your eyes roll when you hear me begin this line of dialogue, I do not blame you. However, the philosophy behind, behind taking draw is that energy and space are both pickups that you can find in other places, events, and relics. But there is no good draw option. Do not, and I'm warning you, do not type wing steel in my comment section in response to this line of dialogue i will uh do nothing about it but be very cross with you for commenting that to me i'm gonna go thorn lord i think in camp plus one attack is worth a little more than 10 hp is i'm torn on taking this money in the middle to be honest with you i don't think i need it i'm gonna go without Bell shield. No problem. Remember the plan? This is me telling me to not autopilot past it. Remember the plan here? It's to find what we're looking for in uh, three stinks. That is kind of nice as well. Uh, and what we're looking for is Soul Crushing Guild. The winning card in this run is Soul Crushing Guild. I repeat, Soul Crushing Guild. Punctuate each card play with it. I was gonna say be careful on the incants here, but this enemy is going to live anyway, so who cares? 101. I'll throw some reaps at you, sure. There is no reason to keep my echoes up. We cycle the deck in three turns, which is very good, because it means that we get back around to razor sharpening very quickly. I think I say very too much. I gotta use other words. We, we cycle the deck swiftly. Uh, with haste, we cycle through the deck. We see all of our cards in a timely manner. None of these are doing it for me. I don't think I want to carry on like this. 120 is not 140. 130 is not 140. I could play Sting there. It doesn't matter. I don't feel like it. Our Wendleton scales up at an extremely good rate. 180 in combat 4 is a good sign, because we're going to make removals to make this more stable. Our health is very high, we look very survivable. I said very twice in a row. I'm very sorry. No. I do not wish to take Engraft or Pyre Shards. There is such a thing as too much draw. Taking Engraft for plus 1 draw is too much draw. Force Contamination. I'm looking for Soul Crushing Guild. Who are you? I could pick Force Contamination. I don't think it advances the plot very much though, because Force Contamination in this run is a survivability pickup, not really a damage pickup, because it's a survivability pickup because all it does is kill an enemy a turn sooner, and then they would die if they had Strangler. So that has to matter for that to be good, and I don't think that matters. I'm gonna go to the relics because there is nothing I can, like, the, the health is worthless. Does Capricious ruin the one card I want to see in some way? No, it only makes it better with double stack or permafrost, so I will take Capricious. Everything else we can get is fine. Hey, th Stings get plus 10 piercing, sounds cool. I will reroll. I should pick Cheater's Hand. I don't want to pick Cheater's Hand, but I should pick it. It's, it is 
Cheater's Hand is the best card relic in this game that I never want to click on. I never want to play Cheater's Hand because I'm gonna have to think about it, and I don't want—I don't want to think about it. What was this? Was this? This was plus thirty. I don't want to think about Cheater's Hand. I'm gonna have to click it every turn. It's an ob it's an obnoxious nightmare. I have healing. I should be fine for spikes for. The only thing that gets bad is if an AoE harvest gets stuck on my floor. I am going to enter the Cheater's Hand holding pattern, as I will call it, which is... Cheater's Handing a dead weight until I see a card that looks better to Cheater's Hand. And like Unleash. Unleash is the card. That I took Cheater's Hand so that I could hold, on, hold over Unleash, and hold over the potential or the eventual if we see it soul crushing deal everything else is secondary the only time i have to stop holding it over unleash is when i have to play it seven two not so bad we reach the we we kill in two turns for the heavies which is a good enough rate for me and eventually it will be one turn does it do i have to be on bottom floor or am i scrolling down here does Cheater's Hand have to proc down here? Okay, it does, actually. So I have to click hide. I, I will keep track of it myself, but I should click hide and check the status of my top floor every turn. I'm not going to do that, but I just want you to know that I should. I'm gonna do that this turn, just to be sure. I can hold. And it's better to wait, because we'll get the full value out of Cheater's Hand. Just to be sure that uh, the the sweet boss should die. Sweep enemies typically lose if you have a single strong unit like this 36, 147, 148. You get the idea. So even if Wendelton were to get sniped after two rounds, you would win this, I think. That life steal feels so inconsequential. Hey, plus five HP, sure. I don't mind. Hmm. Restoring Retreat is a way to beat Patient Seraph a little bit. I think that we start taking answers like this because it's fine. Or I could take hold- no, I'm not gonna take hold over and snare. I'm gonna take the minus one purple Restoring Retreat. This is going to have very few actual uses, but... The deck has room for cards. Room for cards that don't appear to do anything. That's where I was going with that. We're gonna go to the Hellvent. We're gonna take a second Keeper. I will take Energy after this, because a second Keeper means I could draw them both on turn one. And I would not like that. I'm gonna maybe take another Space and play three, but I don't think so. I'm going to start purging fractures. I don't need purples particularly much because root seeds is purple and it replaces itself. So I don't have to worry about removing too many fractures, I don't think. Darkness Arcus. Oh, I have Cheater's Hand. I don't necessarily need to take energy. I will reconsider that opinion. Not right now. I'm not reconsidering it right now. Don't, don't worry. I will reconsider that opinion. I don't know. In like, the end of the combat. Oh my god, my hands, please. So I should put away Raise for Sharp Edge. So the potent- the expected loss for not taking I will purge that. The expected loss here for not taking energy is I lose my second turn and I lose an energy on my third turn. The energy loss isn't that much of an issue. And losing your second turn doesn't sound all that bad. I'm talking myself into taking... What, what am I trying to talk myself into? Draw? No way. You don't take draw here. Oh, I'm my turn. I don't think that I'm in a position where I need to do something about that. 
Uh, I don't need to trim my hand down and play while we're on that in Camp Shark. Ah, oh, those things actually did get me the kill. Cool. Uh, so this looks close. Hang on. Does this look like it adds up to 140 to you? Looks like it adds to 157 to me. Oh, good, because that was 150, not 140. That was almost bad. Not even bad, it's just what it would just not be ideal. Why didn't I hold over? I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm gonna call it holdover for the remainder of the run. When I say holdover in this run, I mean holding it over with Cheater's hand. I know that holdover is already a thing in this game, so. I just, I cannot. I cannot think of another word to use to describe what I am doing with Cheater's hand here other than holdover. What, would you, what do you call it? Do you have a word for it? Because, like, really, I just, all it is to me is, like, return. Why didn't I return this card? I don't know. It doesn't sound right to me. Yeah, definitely I don't take draw here. I think energy is the idea. The draw was fine, but... Hey, if it's alright with you, I'm just gonna end my turn. No, I should play the purples. It's gonna make the number go up, and I like that. Now I'm gonna end my turn in play. If we see a red X, we end our turn. Cool. Is this five rounds? Indeed. Multi strike shard channeler. Zero cost purple unleash sounds fine. I'm going to take energy. The thing is, after taking energy, I'm almost certainly going to see. Because I'm going to go to this magic shop. 100% there's a forever flame here. It's not really in that much of doubt to me it might not happen because now I've, I've called it out right it could be hell's banners yeah it's hell's banners actually my bad i said the wrong one xd hey this is actually holdover holdover razor sharp is pretty good probably want that intrinsic holdover razor sharp sounds solid to me Oh yeah, because this is not even a loss of HP, because you're gaining 2-2. Indeed. I will take it. And minus one... I can keep- I like minus one root seeds, actually. I'll reroll for another minus one, sure. I like it because it's purple. Purple is good here. And... Thorn Lord 2. Is that the right one? Probably. Mm, yeah, Strangler is the one I do not want. How much health? 75? So he comes out at 75 and then 50% of that is 37. So Wendleton has 112 HP here. What a world. Yeah, this is the big upside of having Hell's Banners is I can play both Husker Minute Keepers on this turn and have energy. So it's nice because you just beat out, you're, you're beating out having to deal with... Regen goes first, huh? Interesting. Uh, you're, you beat out having to deal with the Ember Drain for too long. No, I have to, sorry, brain's breaking here. Not so hard, you go Echo Snare. I don't want it. I do not want the collector that bad. I could get it and just ro lower my scaling, but at the end of the day, I don't think I need it. I'd rather kill the enemies. Me scale, me kill. It's fine. Yeah, this is where Cheater's Hand is. Like, Cheater's Hand was a technically correct choice because it was it's very good assuming the worst case here where I get a bunch of garbage, but this is not the worst case, this is the best case, and now Cheater's Hand is just very annoying. And actually lowering my overall draw potential. Because you have to return one of your 10 cards. Very annoying. 
didn't that animation play? Was it because of the spikes? Because the Ember Drain animation from Pyre Wings played there. I think it's because of the spikes. It plays the animation like they're striking you. Let's watch. Is that really how it works? I think you're gonna see when Wendleton swings and takes three, the little animation play, but no actual Ember Drain. Yeah, look at that. Again, if you don't mind, I am now going to press and turn. This guy doesn't really stand a chance. Yeah, he's still a bit of a chance. It was a good effort. I'm going to take my trial money. I did not see the card that I called for. Correct. I will now utilize Restoring Retreat for the same effect. Sort of. Not really, but like, a, a, an effect. Yeah, I need 10 pack shards here, please. Plus 10 piercing. Oh. Okay. Alright, well, I was going to- I'm glad I looked at that, because I did not realize I was about to hold over Restoring Retreat, and then we would get locked out of seeing the boss. The divinity. That's kind of dumb, but... Okay. At least I looked. I will reroll. Precious plating doesn't do anything. Okay. I mean, this sucks because holdover restoring retreat would have been kind of nice here, but... Oh well. I will purge a... I'll purge the non-infused unleash here. The rest of these cards seem fine. Could take the echo snares out, I guess. That doesn't look terrible. Maybe minus one razor sharp edge. Hold over. Hold over steel enhancer sounds fine. Just want to serve oh, I should hold over unleash. I just play that every turn and win. That's whatever. The Seraph the Patient is the only part of this that I feel any fear towards. The enemies can't really, like, even on the Divinity. Only, the Divinity has lower damage output than what Seraph the Patient is going to stack up on me, I feel. We'll see how it goes, though. I think regardless, it's fine. I actually think that Chase Seraph would have been more annoying, but... Eh, maybe not. I don't know. Kind of a toss-up. Yeah, the annoying part here, I'm gonna put the husk permit away. Oh no, I shouldn't do that. I have restoring retreat. Of course. But then again, the... So the annoying part here is I have, I have a limited number of plays every other turn. I'm gonna go one, two, and then end my turn. Like so. Yeah, so my philosophy is we now swap in the other guy, bring in the second Keeper of Echoes from the Grassy Knoll, so that the melee weakness doesn't double stack up on me on this turn. And that's nice. Put away a card that I would like to play but will not because Seraph is here. We want to take measured plays. Two cards is fine. We don't want to go any higher than that, though. Yeah. We want to keep the incants down. A lot of times I will disregard them in this fight, and that is not the correct idea here. I fear for my brother in the front lines. He's gonna have double melee weakness on him, so if I draw... I can restore and retreat out of this, right? That's one way to get out of it. Double melee weakness. This is where you just get bulldozed, but... I think it's okay, because we can just restore Seraph off of the floor. Our brother here will die, but he will die later one by one turn. Which, and I'm gonna try to save him, but I'm pretty sure 3 times 30 is 90, actually, now that I think about it. He's alive. Cool. Oh, and I drew Unleash. Excellent. Okay. Put away Sting. This is four. Wait, this is four. What's going on here? Oh, this Gilded Wing is not dead. 
I wish I could tell you that I had planned for that, but no, I did not. The gilded wing on the front lines. Wings for 10. If I had quick cure, I would actually be in a much worse position, but the infused gilded wing handled, handled business for me. And now, what I want to say to you is that this is not some sort of happy accident. This isn't like, oh, I was at, I was in danger of losing and I got lucky. We were and are fine, but that's a nice uh, bonus that this keeper of echoes gets to live. A nice little boost. If I see a W, I close, I press end turn. I see a W, I press end turn. It's patience there if we don't fuck around. I, oh boy, I make the number bigger and then I encant him high enough that I get crunched. No, thank you. Show me the divinity. Show me divinity. And it's like a ding, and that's the sound of the family feud answer being revealed that the divinity was one of the answers and then the crowd goes wild as I have done it again and I am a genius ah you know I just finished parsing the idea I had the idea I had was to play keeper of echoes to the or to cheaters and keeper of echoes that would be the worst idea not the worst idea I could have but one of the worst ideas I could have. Not quite the same as putting Burnout 1 on a bog fly. Not quite, but pretty bad, a pretty bad idea. This run is really stacked though. Right out of the gate I could have told you this one was going to be pretty stacked because of the... I mean, because of the start hero, Mark of an Exile, Emblem of the Exiles, and Light Skip. Like, that's your first three relics on a run, you're in a good spot. Hey, I'd also like to say, you know what, I'm gonna, I gotta give myself some credit on this run as well. One sec, I gotta, I gotta talk my shit here. I think it's pretty sick and a little slick that I came up with the Restoring Retreat page. I think that was a good idea that I should recognize for myself. There is no reason to take that damage. You can sting off the enemy, there is no reason for him to walk up and be 10 to my front line. Take that, Wilt Wings. If I click on Unleash, we should be in a good spot. Yeah, I mean, you just, you hit the, the damage scaling. A run that starts with Razor Sharp Edge is already blessed as well, but the damage scaling is good enough that we kill the whole Harvest Wave in one swing. Now, the bosses, the mini bosses will live on the floor with me for a turn, I believe. Or, or rather, an extra, they will get a swing and then probably another swing. Oh, actually, they will not. They get one swing. That is fine with me. This one's done. You can pack it in. I, I often will sandbag a little bit. I'll be like, oh, well, what about the... The only risk on this run was me not taking the plus 10 piercing. But somehow, I had the presence of mind and the wherewithal to say, hey, can I get locked out of the divinity here? I don't really... I would love to answer why I thought that. But I have no clue. It just it happened into my brain. I was like, oh, wait a minute. I should make sure I can actually get to the Divinity. Let's verify our pack shards because I'm a little worried. I'm not at 100, and I was correct to verify. <laughs> yeah, I think this is a great run that showcases the power of the plus one or minus one size as well. Second Keeper of Echoes with just a little HP to go with Strangler sounds pretty good to me. Scales pretty well as well, so... Hey, we'll take that. That's a nice W. Not too shabby, not too shabby. No complaints. Okay. I'm going to go to bed now. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.